Hello everybody, it's Tony. Today I'm going to be trying to make calcium chloride from ashes. So, ashes are not calcium chloride. They're composed mainly of calcium carbonate, which is what you find in limestone and seashells. It's not pure calcium carbonate, so I will have to clean it up a little bit, mainly by running water through it and trying to dissolve the sodium and potassium salts that may be in there. So that's what I'll be doing, and I'll come back when that's done. For reference, I have 246 grams of ash, and we're going to wash it and see how much stuff I remove. I now have my ashes dissolved into a pretty muddy looking mixture. All of the carbon, charcoal, and other stuff is floating to the top. There goes my stir. Okay, which is good because that means I'll be able to get rid of it. Another neat thing about this ash water right here is its pH. I have some pH strips right here. If I get a pH strip and some of this liquid, I will find that it is very strongly basic. Almost an 11 or 12 on the pH scale. So this means that this will definitely neutralize acid, which is good for the next step in this process. Once I purify all of the calcium carbonate, I will be dissolving it and turning it into calcium chloride with hydrochloric acid. I will be back once I had this all cleaned up. I thought this would be an interesting addition to the video. As I was settling this out, it started to kind of erupt, almost like a volcano, and shift around, making a bunch of these really neat patterns. So what's going on here is all of the really tiny particles are moving out of the way when the water is coming back up through them. So it looks like it's erupting where it's really just the water pushing all of the little particles away. It's very fun to watch. Here is my calcium carbonate after I have washed and dried it. I weighed it and I have around 150 grams starting from 246 in just the ash and random sticks and stuff. I have dissolved away bits and got out sticks and things, and now I have around 150 grams of mostly calcium carbonate. There's definitely some gunk in there still. Now for getting the calcium chloride, I need to neutralize all of the calcium carbonate in here and turn it into calcium chloride with muriatic acid, also known as hydrochloric acid. So muriatic acid is definitely corrosive, fumes are not fun to breathe, and you don't want to get this on your skin. So I will be putting on gloves and dissolving this. Here is some that I already dissolved. It looks really black and murky. That's just because of some random particles and charcoal bits in there. The fluid itself is clear, but it has stuff in it. So I will be dissolving the rest of this and when I'm done, I'll boil it down, get all of my calcium chloride, and then I can try and run a yield with these numbers. It is definitely going to be skewed because one, these numbers aren't perfect and there's still gunk in here, as you can see, but we can still try and get a general idea. It might be effective, maybe not. I don't know, we're gonna do it anyway. So I will now be dissolving some of this and getting some gloves on. I now have some gloves on and a fan going. There shouldn't be any bad fumes made, but you definitely want a lot of ventilation, especially when you're dealing with hydrochloric acid. There will also be a lot of carbon dioxide made, so you've got to be careful with that also. To begin, the solution is already just here, but I'm going to put some more water in it. So that the 
calcium chloride will have something to dissolve in. That should be good. And now I'm gonna add a little bit of muriatic acid. I'm just gonna be going bit by bit and I'm gonna keep on adding calcium carbonate until it no longer fizzes. I will also be testing the pH with pH strips along the way. So I will get to doing that. This is my solution after I've put a little bit in. It is bubbling pretty good, which means it's working. I'll put a little bit more in. And it's definitely bubbling. Neutralizing the calcium. Neutralizing the calcium carbonate and making carbon dioxide and calcium chloride. So it's doing it. All right, it is chemistry time. So what we're doing here is we're taking calcium carbonate, which is in the ashes, and we're adding hydrochloric acid. So what this does is it makes calcium chloride and CO2. This is not a balanced equation, this is just how it generally works. So it's a lot like a baking soda and vinegar, vinegar volcano, but just with some stronger stuff. So this is pretty much it. It's a very simple reaction and we get what we want, our calcium chloride. CO2 dissolves into the air and, oh, I forgot. You also get water. So this is pretty much the equation and very short chemistry part, but that's how chemistry works. can hear I you can hopefully hear how loud it is through the video and it actually smells like dry ice or opening a canned soda <laughs> you can tell there's a lot of carbon dioxide coming off of this and maybe sometime in the future this might be a neat way to make some carbon dioxide I ended up taking this outside because just the fan was not nearly enough to ventilate it well. It is turning black from all the stuff I've put in it and it's still dissolving. Still have a good bit left to go, but we're getting closer. Here is my solution after I have finished neutralizing all of the ashes. There is a lot of stuff in the bottom but it's also settled out fairly clear so now all I need to do is filter it and here's the pH got a pH strip it's perfect not basic and not acidic so that means there shouldn't be anything in here dissolved except salts which is nice I will come back once it's all filtered. I have now filtered my solution and it is pretty clear for the most part. It's still a bit yellow, but it looks pretty good. I'm going to be putting it on my hot plate in a bit to drive all the water off and see how much salt I have so I can weigh it out and calculate the yield. But Something else neat about this, it is it has been sitting here for a few days. I haven't had time to really take care of it. It was covered during that time with some paper, but over that time, it made crystals. It's hard to tell on the video, but there is some crystals on the bottom. 
there's some of my calcium chloride, which is really nice. <laughs> I will be back once it's all done drying out and I'll weigh it and we'll have the yield. I was coming back to check on it. After a while, I had to leave it for a bit and I baked it pretty hot. So I put some water back in and it turned out I had broken my beaker. This is now in here now. And I lost some of the liquid. Now I'm gonna have to clean this up. And another good beaker gone. Uh, that'll teach me to leave it on heat too long. After getting it back in and redissolving it, I'm boiling it down again. Uh, <laughs> let's not leave it on the heat for too long again. But it's working. We're getting it boiled down. It really, really does not want to crystallize. So we'll see how that goes. But we're almost done. It's so close. Uh, my yield for this whole thing is going to be terrible. But it might work. So that's that. We're boiling it down and starting to make a lot of bubbles. And it's crystallizing on the bubbles. So you end up getting something that looks almost like parchment paper. But very strange. Then when you stir it, it near completely disappears. Then it comes back. So that's cool. We're getting very close. And yeah, it's getting pretty thick. Should be almost there. I've shut the heating off. It is very goopy. And looks almost like melted sugar. It is crazy hot. I burned my finger a little bit because I was pulling a piece out to sit down and take a look at it. But let's see. 250 degrees Fahrenheit. Um for you Celsius guys, that's around 126. So yeah this is crazy hot. And a liquid. So it definitely still has some water in it, but I think it's all going to kind of goop and freeze up as it cools down. It might be a nightmare to get out of here. Um, let's find a way to fix that. I now have it out and spread out on some aluminum foil. Uh, should work pretty well once it hardens to get it off. I tried on a small scale and it worked pretty well. Unless it's definitely wet-ish, but eh, hopefully it won't freeze up and be impossible to get off of here. I don't think it'll do that, but I wanted to get most of it out. And if I really needed to, I could put this on the hot plate and try cook it. You know what? Nah, that's probably a bad idea. Aluminum's too thin for that. Um, hopefully it'll harden. This is definitely not a great way to go about this, but it's the best I have right now. Um, calcium chloride is a very, very wonky salt. I have learned that. <laughs> um, hopefully anybody watching this video does not try and boil the crud out of it like I did and smashed a beaker. So, uh, at least I learned that. It has cooled down enough to weigh it. So let's zero out my scale. All right, and let's get this in. All right, we have 105 grams of calcium chloride. Yep. Well, I'm gonna go do the math and calculate the yield. After doing the calculations and going through it, I ended up with 
my percent yield around 63.63%. I lost a lot of material in a lot of different places, so you could, using this reaction, definitely get something higher. I had a theoretical yield of 165 grams and I got 105. This is definitely not achievable because my calcium carbonate, after I got it from the ash, still had a whole bunch of like little bits of charcoal and other random things in it. But I still ended up with a good amount of calcium chloride. It's not perfect. I lost some in just the getting out of all the sticks from the ash. I lost some in acidifying the calcium carbonate and turning it into calcium chloride because of I didn't fully react every single bit of calcium chloride. I left a little bit in there because I did not want to deal with boiling hydrochloric acid away. So I lost probably not too much, maybe 10 grams. But I still ended up with around 105 grams of calcium chloride. It's not a great amount, but it's enough for pretty much whatever I'm going to use it for for a very long time, considering I don't really have that many uses that require a lot of calcium chloride. But yeah, that's, that's my yield, around 63%. You could probably boost it up to 80 if you're really careful with everything and did a better job of straining out ash so let's go look at our product one more time so here it is our product it's not a massive amount but it should be good enough for whatever i'm going to use it for for a long time and i think my goals have been accomplished i've made calcium chloride there might be some potassium and sodium contamination in it but other than that it should be calcium chloride out of ashes. And this could be a viable method of making calcium chloride if you have a large amount of ashes and a lot of hydrochloric acid. So I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did like it and think it's worth it, consider subscribing. And if you have any questions, leave a comment. I'd be happy to answer them to the best of my ability. Um, yeah, that should be it. Stay safe and happy sciencing.